I've now finished the wooden sheath and the final stage was to uh, put these rattan loops here which uh, bind the two halves of the sheath together and these are made using rattan and with uh, this knot called a simpan knot which I'll show you in a second. And Rattan is, is fantastic stuff to work with. It's incredibly strong. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite flexible, so it's, it's easy to work with. And in, in the jungle, it's really the king of cordage. In fact, the Malays have a phrase, if you can't find rattan, use a liana. And you know, what, that, what that's really getting at is uh, you know, if you can't find what you want, then use what you've got. But the preferred, um, uh, the preferred cordage for, you know, if, you, if you're looking for strength and flexibility is rattan. And to work with rattan, you know, first of all, you, you have to find your rattan in, in the jungle. There are various sorts. This is, um, uh, you know, about the, the right sort of uh, diameter for what you want. There are much bigger rattans, like uh, this is a piece of rattan manau, which can grow to about... Um, you know, over 150 meters long. Finding rattan in the jungle isn't really the problem. The problem is that the rattan finds you and the hooks and thorns will snag in your clothing as you, as you go through the jungle. But once you've found your rattan, you need to cut off the, the growing stem of the, the plant. Uh, you know, and remember when you do this, you, you kill the rattan, so you know, don't do it unnecessarily. And then in some cases, like with this rattan udang, need to clean off the outer sheath, which is uh, you know, quite thorny and spiky. And you do that just by um, you know, wrapping around the tree, tree trunk and pulling it through. And then the next stage is you just uh, you can just wind up the rattan uh, into a loop, twist it together and take it back to camp. Once you've found your rattan, the next stage is to, is to, is to split it and thin it down so that you end up with something like this, and this, this you can work with. So splitting rattan, you might think, you know, is, is pretty straightforward, but actually there's um, you know, a bit of a trick to it. And there, are, there are three basic stages. First of all, you have to start the split. And it's easy to get this wrong. Uh, what you'll see people doing who are sort of expert at it, is they'll hold the rattan like this and work their parang into the rattan. But you'll see other people just pushing hard to try and uh, drive the parang in and, and begin the split. And this is very risky because what happens is the resistance, at first it's really quite tough, and then the resistance will disappear and the parang will just slip forward. So you need to be quite careful when you, when you start the split. And uh, you know, a safer way... <coughs> Is, uh, is to, to put it on a surface and just uh, you know, force the parang, the tip of the parang in uh, and keep, you know, keeping your fingers well out of the way. Once you've got the split started, you carefully push, put the parang into the split. And what you're not doing is pushing the parang down to make the split travel. The, the, what you do instead is you twist the parang up or down to make the to make the split travel down the, the rattan, and remember we're starting at the thinnest end, the thinnest diameter of the rattan, which is where the rattan grows from, and working to the, working along to the tip of the rattan, which is the thickest diameter. And what you'll find, and this is the trick, is that um, as you split, there's a danger that one side of the split will will thin down and taper off and and split off, and you won't get an even split down the rattan. So what you need to do is, if you get, um, you can see this bottom, the bottom bit here is slightly thicker than the top bit. If this starts to get too thick and this uh, split starts to get too thin, then what I'm going to do is push down with the parang on the thicker side of the split, and that will thin it. So I'm just working our way down. Just keep checking to make sure it's even. As I say, if you know, I'm not pushing the parang, I'm not digging the parang into the rattan, I'm just using this bending, bending it out to make the split travel. Again, just check to, to make sure it's okay, and we seem to be pretty good here.
Okay, so here um, you can see this this part has now become uh, a bit thinner than this part. So it's because I've been pushing down. So now I'm going to switch and I'm going to start pushing up on this piece to even it out. And there's no risk of me cutting my fingers here because I'm not pushing the parang forward, I'm just twisting the parang. And you can see, just by doing that, I've now evened these two halves. <laughs> I'm going to split this again, so we're going to make a second split. And again, the, prin the principles are the same. Just be very careful starting the initial split. I would, if I were you, I'd resist the temptation to um, draw your parang in here. I'd put it on a surface, uh, you know, and just do it with your, your hands nicely out of the way. Oh, a bit of trouble here. There we go. So I've started the split. Then I just want to get the parang in there. And the same thing, I'm going to twist down on the, pressing down on whichever part of the split is thickest to keep it nice and even. Okay, done there. So now what I've got is a uh, you know, reasonably thin piece of rattan and that's, uh, you know, that's going to be okay to work with to make our simpan knot. So the next stage is to try and remove as much of this inner core as you can. And again, if you watch the video of Bar's relative doing this, he, he'll just use his finger as a, as a guide. Um, I, I don't do that because I'm worried about chopping my finger off. So a safer way to do this, although it's a little bit tougher on your trousers, is to use your, uh, is to use your leg. Here, I'm not pushing forward on the parang, I'm not doing that, I'm pulling backwards on the rattan. So there's no real risk that I'll cut myself. Um, and now we just start to peel out as much of the core of this as we can. And you know, you can, you can do this you know, quite slowly and carefully. So, you know, you make sure you don't damage your rattan. And what we're trying to do is uh, get to the point where we're just left with the outer, more or less just left with the outer skin. And once you've got it as thin as you, 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 know, you, you, you can, then the final stage is just to take off any sharp edges here. So you just like very gently run, run it along the edge of your knife. This will even out the rattan a bit. And just get rid of any of those sharp edges. The final stage, once you've thinned down the uh, the rattan, taken out as much of the core as you can, um, is to tie the knot. And this is where rattan's great because not only is this you know, incredibly strong, you know, it's very very flexible as well. So you know, it's quite easy to work with. So to make the knot, the first thing you need to do is just sort of measure it up roughly. Um, just wrap the rattan around sheath like this and then just pull it off so that's the size of loop that I'm looking looking to do and the simpan knot the easiest way of sort of understanding it is it's, it's basically like um, uh, a three strand braid but it's made with a single piece of, of rattan so what we do is we double that loop double that loop um, and then these two sort of standing or standing parts, uh, we're just going to twist them across each other and feed the working end through. And it's a bit difficult to see with rattan, but I'll show you. I'll show you again in a minute using um, some rope. And then what we're going to do is twist these two standing parts across each other like that. Um, not right way, no other way. Like 
that and feed the working end through again. And then we just repeat this. So the, the working end is kind of going in a wave um, through, the, through the two standing parts. I mean, it's quite an easy knot, not, not perhaps the most useful knot you could ever learn. Um, but it's, you know, uh, it, it's the one that's used um, traditionally to hold the sheath together. Actually, that'll probably do. Just, I mean, we could make this tighter, but I'll just finish this off quickly so you can see how it works. And now what I'm doing with the loose ends is I just follow the pattern you know, that's, that's already been made to sort of uh, tuck them out of the way. Excuse my cat in the background. Right, and that's you, you know your basic knot really there. Uh, I'll just tuck this end out. And you know, this is very, very strong. Um, and then all you do is you just push that over the sheath and pull it up until it wedges. The sheath's tapered here. Uh, and then that'll hold you, you, the two halves of the sheath together. So, you know, quite straightforward, really. Let me see if I can show you the knot more easily using, uh, using rope. Might be a bit more obvious. So we make two loops. We twist these two sort of standing parts across like that and feed the working end through. So that's the beginning of our braid pattern. And now what we do is we take the, the two sort of standing parts, that's the working end there, and we twist those across each other like that. And now we just feed the working end uh, th through that loop, through the gap there. See the patterns emerging. Now twist them again. the working in between, work the way around, twist them again, move it around, you're probably getting the idea by now, until you pretty much run out of rope, which is what's happened now, so that's the, that's the basic sim pan. That's finished, I put a, a, a ring and a and a clip here so you know that it's quite easy to put on and off um, and you know it feels very comfortable the handle's nice um, so we'll take it out into the jungle and see how it does the sheath holds the parang so it won't won't drop out um, but you know it's still easy to take it in and out. <laughs>